Officer, Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center, welcome to this most honored occasion to pay tribute and acknowledge the members of Underwater Construction Team 1, Detachment November Mike 85, during the events of TWA Flight 847. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Abra Munch, Abel Boulevard, Commander, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, shipmates, active and retired staff and students, good morning and welcome. My name is Construction, Electri Le Construction Electrician Chief Terry Jurgens, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies. To our esteemed guests, Kenneth Bowen, Clint Suggs, Stuart Dahl, and Kenneth Steedham, and family and friends, NDSTC is honored that you could be here to accept a small token of our appreciation. This is truly a perfect end to a week of paying tribute and recognizing the year of the military diver. Construction Team 1, Detachment November Mike 85, was returning from an official assignment to Niamaka, Greece, aboard TWA Flight 847. The flight was hijacked by members of a terrorist group, Hezbollah. They were subjected to over 24 hours of physical and psychological torture while the terrorists directed the aircraft to fly from Beirut, Lebanon, to Algiers, Algeria, and then back to Beirut. During this time, several of the service members were singled out by the terrorists to take added beatings. SW2 Robert Steedham was specifically taken, brutally beaten, and then shot in the head, and then thrown from the airplane to die on the tarmac at Beirut Airport. Terrorists were not satisfied with the results of killing one service member and turned to C2 Suggs. The terrorists began to beat him in a fashion, preparing to make him to, make him, to use him to make more demands. If not for the actions of the flight attendant, their intentions were most likely the same for C-2 Suggs as SW-2 Steedham. Their fellow sailors were forced to endure watching the brutal beatings of their shipmates and then execution of SW-2 Steedham. The five surviving sailors were separated from the rest of the passengers and taken off the airplane in Beirut. Four of the sailors were taken by heavily armed Lebanese and AMOL militia to a concrete cell in West Beirut in the streets surrounding the cell, two different factions fought their own battles. The sailors didn't know their fate. They withstood death threats, mock executions, 
and were forced to witness the beating death of a Palestinian prisoner. The constant threat of rocket attack and being overtaken by Palestinian guerrillas who were trying to kill the U.S. captives to embarrass the Amal militiamen added to the horrific conditions. The fifth sailor remained isolated with two other civilian passengers by Hezbollah Terrace at a different location until later reunited with his shipmates. After 17 days of captivity, the sailors were finally released to U.S. representatives in Damascus, Syria on 30 June 1985. These six sailors were subjected to brutal treatment and held in horrendous conditions during their hijacking and captivity. Throughout their ordeal, they were held captive under circumstances that were comparable to those under which persons have generally been held captive by enemy armed forces during periods of enemy armed conflict. They were in every way comparable to prisoners of war. The sailors proved themselves to be of the highest level of honor and courage, commitment, and upheld the code of conduct under the harshest of conditions. It set the example for all of us to emulate, showing extreme personal courage and fortitude in the face of incredible danger. Even after their ordeal was over, the surviving sailors continue to display the highest levels of professionalism by reliving that ordeal in great detail while providing invaluable intelligence input and support whenever required. They all went, into, went on to continue their naval careers, either in the active or reserve community, and have retired after serving their country and their Navy with the same level of extraordinary commitment that they showed during this captivity. They all carry the unseen wounds they may never heal, but they demonstrate great resiliency and perseverance as they work in the civilian sector. Their conduct was and continues to be in the highest tradition of the United States Naval Service. The story I just read will never do justice to what happened, and most of us here today will never be faced by what these heroes had to endure. And yes, this level of conduct is expected of all U.S. personnel but seldom is it tested or achieved with perfection in which these fine gentlemen attain. Each of us have our own recollection of the event. I was a young man and, and <coughs> I didn't know that uh, I'd be in any way, shape or form in the future you know, related to these, these fine gentlemen in front of us. But when I came into the Navy and I heard their stories and I heard, heard the legacy that they had left for me and the rest of my shipmates, um, it was a very humbling experience. Um, and not many of you know, prior to the, to the flight, the job that they had to complete in Neomachri, Greece. It was seven of them. They were tasked to go and, and, and prepare a sewer outfall. So obviously not the most glamorous of jobs. <coughs> so just like uh, any of us have probably experienced in here, the gear was frustrated. So gear didn't show up. They didn't have anything to work with. But what do we do in here? We, we make do with what we have and we get the job done. It's the who ya spirit and the who the can do attitude that these gentlemen portrayed. So my generation can learn from that and this generation and as the new students in here graduate, it's the who ya spirit and can do attitude that gets jobs done in the Navy. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> At this time, I would like to introduce the commanding officer of the Naval Diving and Salvage Tra Training Center Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I, I couldn't think of a better way to end, like Master Diver said, to end a perfect week uh, than to recognize our, our American heroes here. You know, we all know Navy divers are, are not uh, fighting men or women. It, we, we go into the sea and we do our work. And uh, But that day, they were fighting men because they... they they were singled out for one reason, one reason alone, because they're Americans. Because they're American servicemen. And they stood for freedom. They stood, stood for liberty. They stood for us. And so I, I want us to always remember their sacrifice because it, they, they are the essence of who we are. They are the men that, that we, we hope to become one day. And so, you know, I want to keep these, my comments brief because, you know, nothing I can say can really say thank you for what you've done and, and, and just for bringing glory to the, our, our nation and, and our flag and for making us want to be better men. So with that, let's, let's move forward in this uh, ceremony. Would our esteemed guests please join us up on the stage, please.
behalf of Naval Diving Salvage Training Center and your entire brothers, all your brothers and sisters in the diving community, I just want to present you with this plaque for, for our nation finally recognizing your sacrifice with the Prisoner of War Medal on the 24th of, of April. Thank you. Friendship is what you do when people are nice to you, and then you know the more the, the nicer they are to you, the more they do for you. But brotherhood is about doing things just because, just because they're your brothers. So thank you very much. Thank you. share some words from the MCPON. I was a young airman in VQ-2, rode to Spain in 1985, and remember the hijacking of TWA-47 like it was yesterday. I have thought about you all off and on over the past 30 years, and it's an honor to call you my shipmates. I thank each, and I thank each of you from the bottom of my heart for your service to our great nation and Navy. God bless you, my friends. All the best. Mike Stevens, Master Chief Petty, Petty Officer of the Navy. today and you get stuck in traffic and you're bitching, that's nothing. <laughs> that, that's an easy day, right? Uh, I had the honor to meet all these guys and uh, been in the Navy about 30 years. I've seen over 100 mass drivers get pinned. I've seen chiefs get pinned. I've seen mass chiefs get pinned. I've seen two Charlie divers get pinned. But there's no prouder day than today when we get to make our friend, our shipmate, the honorary Chief Petty Officer, Clinton Sucks. Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, with great pride and pleasure, hereby appoints Clinton Suggs, U.S. Navy, an honorary Chief Petty Officer. The appointee is granted the full honors incumbent to this recognition and will carefully and diligently perform the duties of an honorary Chief Petty Officer. Therefore, by the authority vested in me, I declare this appointment effective. 
given under my hand the seventh day of May of the year of our Lord, 2015, Mike Stevens, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. here to um, to the military divers um, Rob's not here to tell his story and these guys nobody really heard a lot about what happened during the incident because these guys didn't really talk about it. and heroes typically don't talk about what they've done um, but I told these guys in DC when the POW medal was awarded I'm, I'm grateful that you taught Rob, you trained Rob, and you took care of Rob. And, and uh, we couldn't be prouder of you. And uh, uh, <coughs> Commander, you, you and, and Mass Chief have done a phenomenal job, and you couldn't end a week better. Um, a couple of, more than a couple of times today, um, Word, honor, courage, and commitment. And legacy. You mentioned legacy. And it's, I think it's so fitting because I, it's been 30 plus years since I've been here. The equipment's changed. The techniques have changed. But what has stayed the same is the values. The honor, the courage, and commitment. These guys weren't trained. They weren't prepared. They had faith in God, faith in each other, and they had a code of conduct. And they stuck to the honor, encouraging commitment. Before that was really a Navy core value identified. So, Commander, what we'd like to do is present to the school, and we haven't got all the signatures on this yet, but we will. What we'd like to do is present to you a photo of Rob with the legacy of the November Mike Detachment and, and this group of guys, which is honor, courage, and commitment. Cool.
set a bar not just for the team and your community but in the Navy but all military divers and and uh, um, and Rob was part of the team too and he showed this he's got the same legacy and and uh, so we're gonna get all these signed and we'd like to present them to you so that you can put them where where you believe they should go for the future generations <laughs> to to know a little bit about the guys who went before them yeah. saying and it was from a founding father and I can't I can't think of this statement without thinking of my brother and these men and it, and it, it goes like this I love the man that can smile in danger that can gather strength from distress and grow brave by reflection tis the business of little minds to shrink but he whose conscience approves his conduct will pursue his principles unto death. We're all divers. What makes, what makes us come home every day, what makes us safe, what makes us successful isn't the gear. It's the principles that we use the gear with. They're our guiding light. And you guys could not have done better in the situation you were in. So just thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.